The fire that burns in the social, psychological, and spiritual dimensions of humanity can ruin the world. Or this fire can transform into community. It's up to us. Sitting in the fire, Arnold Mendel. In this program, and in this series, you'll learn about a group process called world work, a process committed to building community by paying close attention to power, rank, revenge, and abuse in group work. In this first program, you'll meet some of the creators and practitioners, learn the basics of world work, and what it means to sit in the fire of conflict and diversity. Later programs in the series will demonstrate how world work can be used to address specific conflicts. Maybe there are other white males in the room who could speak to what Randy is asking about. World work begins with the work of Dr. Arnold Mendel. Trained first as a theoretical physicist at MIT in Boston, he went on to study Jungian psychology in Switzerland. There he drew on other psychological approaches, Eastern philosophy, non-Western and shamanic traditions to develop his own approach to individual therapy. It's called process work. Today there are thousands of people around the world who have been trained in this therapeutic approach. In the 1980s, with Dr. Amy Mendel and other process work colleagues, Arnie Mendel began to apply these personal therapeutic techniques to class, race, gender, and other conflicts that arise at the group and social level, a process that is now called world work. Looking back, Arnie Mendel can see that these concerns with oppression and group process are probably rooted in his own childhood. Growing up as a uh, Jewish kid during the uh, Second World War, I recall very clearly going to school and being called names and being beaten up many times for being a Jewish kid. I wanted to be friends with those people who were attacking me. I wanted to love them. And in fact, I, I did love them, even though I hated them. And having to hate them and fight them only, and learning how to fight well, didn't have to satisfy me. And so I, later on, I went through my own Jungian training and, and learned about dreams. And, and Jungian psychology at the time was not looking into social issues very much. And I felt that that was marginalized. And then as I began to develop process work and the concept of process, I realized that process must have been the thing I was looking for, for a dialogue and interaction, yes, no, and then to get deeper into the deeper feeling realm of things. How does world work differ from other group processes? Arnie Mendel remembers a recent public meeting about the environment that was following a standard parliamentarian procedure. In the middle of this voting procedure, an Aboriginal woman stood up and spoke, and she says, I have so much feeling about all of this. And these feelings haven't been really heard. And the person leading the meeting said, this is out of order. So just this stuff, which is not in order is the stuff that revolts afterwards, comes back and upsets all of us. And so world work is a method devoted towards dealing with her feelings, your feelings, my feelings, all the feeling stuff and emotional human stuff, the upsetness, the antagonism, the great dreams and desires that we have, giving that a floor and letting that stuff come forward and speak. And so world work deals with learning how to manage and get deeper into the emotional and then even into the dream-like situations of all of us so that we can come together and work together better. The Mindells and other world work facilitators work with a variety of groups and businesses around the world. And over the years, they've held world work training seminars in Europe, in India, in the state of Oregon, and in the summer of 1999, 
in Washington, D.C. at Howard University. It's a beautiful morning outside. I'm glad that you're all here. My name is Gladys, and it's been a long time, a lot of work, a lot of effort, bringing world work here to Washington, D.C., the first time that we've had a world work in an urban area. We are the organizational team, and we are also uh, the first facilitation team. So we have two roles with you. So we have a staff of about 50 people or so, and I think it would be nice to, to welcome them. Um, it's a large staff that also has a lot of dedication and enthusiasm. The staff will be doing different things. Some of us will be facilitating up here in the front. Some will be leading small groups, I'm doing private sessions with you, leading the theory groups, the social awareness groups. This group with, of people with hearts on their shirts. If you're, if you're needing something, if you're suffering, if you need a hand to hold, if you need to be heard, um, the staff is here, but particularly those folks with hearts on their shirts. And I think the unique thing that I want to tell you about our staff is that we're, we're not only here to teach and facilitate world work, but I think more important than anything, we are co-learners. We really are here to learn together as a group. You might think at one moment they look more like social activists, and I think that is because the, the facilitator role is really a role that anyone here can fill, and no one can facilitate always 100%. So you will see fluidity within the facilitator staff. We, will, we are also learning with you. And that is the kind of environment that we would like to create together and also to welcome and encourage those of you who are leaders and elders and teachers in your own community that you are really here to help with the facilitation of this thing that we call world work together. People are telling me that it's going really well and uh, things like it's the best world work and uh, it's deep and it's really stimulating. I think the thing that I'm most pleased about is the effect that we're having on the rest of the world by having it here and being here and the kind of content that's coming out. So it's very, very strong for me. Yeah. I'm going to try and present some basic concepts of world work. First thing that we usually try to do is sense the atmosphere, that inside this room um, there is an atmosphere and we can feel it. There's a quality to it. In group work, think in terms of fields, like we think that Everyone who is in this room is part of a field. We, through our feelings and our perceptions, are the mind of this field. And this mind awakens through our awareness. You can also think of a community as a field and uh, as a mind that's trying to know itself. So we think of group process as one of the ways that a community can get to know itself, its different parts. What's happening in this group? Like when we work on ourselves and we get to know the different parts of ourselves, when we do a group process, we get to know the different parts and the dreaming of the group, of the community. But this is my high dream. We can be closer. It's also um, a way to become conscious of the diversity that is in a community and to celebrate it. Many times, communities have a tendency to submerge the differences, to try to get to a oneness. But if we really celebrate and first of all, become conscious of the differences, then the oneness that we get to is stronger. It's also um, a good way of inner work. Maybe take a moment and just get centered in some way that uh, you can feel comfortable. Try to be just a bit aware of what's happening to you as you do this, this inner work exercise. 
group process as a way of inner work because many times the people that we have a problem with or that trouble us are a part of ourselves that we don't know that well and we're having trouble with. So there are all these different levels. And then the second thing is to try to sort and find what are the different issues that are in the room here. What are the different things that want to be focused on? We have tried to get Northern Ireland on the board since we have arrived. I really would like us to focus on Holocaust and contemporary uh, anti-Semitism. I want to be heard. This is exactly what you do in international development. You push us back on the agenda, back and back and down all the time. Our sister is here who is indigenous, who is invisible in this country, Native American Indians. In my country, on my land, I'm invisible. I'd like Hold to speak. I have, a, I have a topic for eldership. And we Thank just want you. to get ourselves on the board. Uh, we can go on with issues all day. I come from Balkans and I would like us to focus on gay and lesbian today so that we can really focus on what is happening over there tomorrow. And then we try to come to a consensus, what we call a consensus, which means it's a momentary agreement. We might decide together that for the moment we're going to agree to focus on one issue. Let's make a decision now as a group. There's a whole bunch of things that have been spoken and if we as individuals just speak, that's important, but we should have consensus really on that. So bisexuality, pain and joy, I'm just using the terms, they're not descriptive of the emotion and the importance of the things, but just to remind you, I'll read them through and then maybe you can feel about that for a moment and then somehow we'll come to it as maybe we'll make a sound. That's, there's no one way to make a decision. Yesterday, we made a commitment in this room to pick up where we left off. Can we agree maybe to go back to the issues of last night? Maybe there's a shortcut here. We can go down the list, or do we want to just agree to go back to what we were doing last night? Okay. Now, if we do that, though, I know we're putting other issues on the side. I want to check the group. Would it be all right if we actually made a decision about something to focus on? Can, can, we, can I, one thing. Maybe we could spin a pen if we can't come to agreement. Is that consensus? Uh, Spinning I'm gonna the war the war on this side gay and lesbian on this side and can we Gay and lesbian One of the ways that an issue comes forward is through polarities So the next thing we try to do is find the polarities that uh, an issue is expressed by Sometimes we set up different positions in the room for these polarities I, I, I want to hear why I'm not a man. Someone can, maybe someone can speak to that. Maybe there are other white males in the room who could speak to what Randy is asking about. And people will come up and try to speak for those different positions. That strength of what we think manhood is. That I can be walk around and I can just tell all of you what to do. That, I'm, that I can just run this whole thing. It takes away that strength. It, it strips that away. Why? I'm not going to go against you because you are trying to protect these kids. Straight but that's where, that's where my dilemma is, my brother. Which we call them roles. I just have to say that the two of you, it looks like it's two people working, and they are, but you are really working for, each of you are working for a whole group of people. You are roles. I just, Here's a I, white person willing to speak for that role. Speaking from the viewpoint of the Greek, the Greeks, the Greeks, but from the American public side, I would like to stand for that. You know, thank as a, as thank a, you, thank you very much. Maybe we could About the roles, I want to say that one person usually is not enough to really fill in that role. We'll run over you. We've taken your land. You're, there's something, but I can't play this alone. Yikes. <laughs> so. Many different, there are many different uh, viewpoints that will fill in one position. 
And also, no, none of us is just one thing. So, in one moment, we want, might feel ourselves to be on one side and expressing something strongly, and then, in another point, feel that we are um, feeling something that belongs to the other side. Uh, that's, you know, I, I, can't, I can't go for that. It pushes me right over to David's side. So, we are more complex than just one role. Sometimes there are things that are being talked about, but we're not really representing them yet. And those we call ghost roles, like that there are ghosts in the room. We talk about them, but we're not really standing for them yet. So we try to bring in the ghosts. My great-grandfather was a suspe suspected member of, of the KKK. Um, that's the Ku Klux Klan. I know that my uh, relatives who are uh, dead in Auschwitz and Sobibor and other places would say to me that their deaths in part are not in vain if we also learn and work with those experiences of atrocities that happened then and the genocides that continue to happen. So uh, I'm thinking because we are in Washington, D.C., and there is a memorial down the road, a very powerful memorial for those people who haven't been, that I would uh, like to uh, make some space, if that's possible, to uh, also work on that issue. Um, yeah. We will be here together on July the 3rd. On July the 3rd, finally, finally, a monument will be lowered into the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, recognizing the middle passage where my ancestors, so many of them, were not lost, were, were planted, and are the foundation upon which we stand. Welcome to my world. The Middle Passage are the, the slave ships that came from Africa to the United States to the Caribbean, Brazil, and brought African people here as slaves and the, the terrible, excruciating journey that that was. Millions were lost. Most didn't make the ship. They weren't lost. They were killed and murdered, raped and maimed thrown overboard. Millions. And still we rise. I just said, and thrown overboard to make more room on a ship for food for the shipmates. As this interaction happens, um, edges come up. And by edges, we mean a barrier. It's a barrier to communication. Something wants to be expressed, but you can't really say it. So we also try to notice when the group comes to an edge and um, stay there and try to express what is trying to be expressed. I, I, I said I'm, I'm lost between uh, somewhere between my feeling and, and what's, what's what I understand, and I, I don't have the connection. <laughs> I didn't want to be here in the, to begin with. <laughs> I didn't want to be here. <laughs> Another thing that often happens once this interaction starts is what we call hot spot. A hot spot is an intense moment. It's uh, something happens like someone might say something that's strong. And, uh, or it might be like intense emotion, it might be anger, or it might be love, or it might be a shock. This morning, when the heat was on, and there were black people standing up talking, this was before you guys were sitting down, you got the microphone and started to talk. I have three children. They are grown up by now, but in my... And I said to you, some version of get your white butt out of there. 
This is about the black people. You're using your rank as a white man to speak. You have no business speaking. And you replied to me, you have no rank. I hope I got the intonation correct. This is, yeah, this is a hot spot. That's, uh, that's difficult. I, if, and I said something else I, uh, on top of that. I said, I'm glad I have this rank. As a group, we have a tendency to go away from the hot spot. To, something happens, and then the group tends to ignore that and go on to something different. And um, when we're facilitating, we're trying to notice those spots and try to keep uh, the group's focus there, try to bring it back, because really the hot spot is an invitation to go deeper, and um, that will help the process to unfold. I, I want to check something out here. I don't think you intend to really hurt Debbie. No, of course I didn't. I, I but, reacted, but I reacted uh, when I had the microphone. Yes, but can you also, uh, although you didn't intend to hurt her by saying that she had no rank, uh, would you be interested in exploring uh, why that could be a very hurtful thing to say? Oh, yeah, I see, I should, yeah. I think it, it, if we can hang on to this for a minute, it, it might be useful. I hope it's useful. I pray that it's going to be useful. So uh, I think if we can maybe hold it down to the interaction between you is that, is that okay with you, Debbie? Yeah, that's fine. I think we might get further. It might be more interesting. Another thing that happens is that there are different levels that are being worked on, different levels of oppression. When, we, when the group gets into an issue, um, one level of oppression is the internal one, like internalized oppression, what it does to us, something inside of us that makes us feel bad. I have to be really honest. When I say that, I see a couple in front of me and they're speaking Chinese and I become nativist. It's like, they're speaking Chinese. Uh oh, what are people gonna think? Maybe they think I'm with them. Maybe they think I speak just Chinese. Maybe, da -da 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 -da, you know. I wouldn't feel the same way if they were speaking French. If they were speaking any European language, I wouldn't feel the same because I would not be worried that I'd be seen in the same group. And I hate that. Another level of the oppression manifests in relationship. So it might occur in the moment, in the room, in the interaction, in the way we interact with one another. So that when people come up and want to deal with racism, and they want, to, they, want to, they want to work on all these things. It's important to work on them, but please don't use me. My life expectancy, my life expectancy is, is, you know, I've lived way beyond my father. By rights, I shouldn't be here at my age. And if I have to continue to hear all of these kinds of things, then it's very hurtful and painful to me. I find it difficult to listen to you because I was really interested when you started to talk about your chi childhood experience. And this, this part of the story is so much mixed with propaganda that I, don't, I cannot really trust it, really. Uh, yet another level is, would be the group, that as a group we have a tendency to ignore different parts of us, like we might ignore language differences or economic differences. How we can bring a communication style in this group, and you are speaking out so much, and there is no room for us to speaking out. I don't think you guys understand what it's like for us. We, are, we were talking in the middle, and then all this stuff got involved down the outside. And every time something like that happens, we get our voice taken away. And we never get to say anything. Because you guys say, we're the new generation. We're teaching you. Well, let us teach you. Let us talk. And that would be the group level. And then there's the systemic level, the thing that's happening outside in the world. 
So it would be the media, the laws. We are always spoken to as the blacks, as if we are unified whole. The only communication I have is individual communication one on one because my voice, my voice, my voices are not represented in the media because they're not re represented in the powers of government or the halls of our businesses. Every time that our foreign minister pushed the solution towards diplomacy and dialogue, the State Department of the United States issued a directive that Greece is a country that supports terrorism and thus cornered us in the wall and forced us to shut up. As a group, group work has different um, faces. We might at some point interact as a group, so it would be a large group interaction, or at some point the process might deepen by focusing as a group on one person. I admit I have privilege. I have tremendous privilege. I can't, I have so much privilege that I don't even know all the privilege I have. I am sitting on this side and I don't totally agree with this side. I'd feel like a hypocrite sitting on your side because I am white and I can hide my, my diversity. So how, tell me, help me out here. Tell me how I can be there. Or we might focus on an interaction between two people, on the relationship between two people, and that would deepen the process. It's, in, it's, among, it's among men, and if they can handle it, I think it'll, it'll work itself out. Let's not just go to the lowest level. What's the highest level? The highest level is that we can do this. We, no, we can do this with respect. We ain't got to put right. Or a subgroup might come in the middle and work in the middle of the large group. And sometimes groups, like at the end of the group process, sometimes we might get to a completion, a momentary sense of completion and a sense that we got um, a new awareness of something. And sometimes it might be incomplete because issues have just started to unfold. And this process keeps continuing, like the work might continue by our own inner work or by the small group, in the small group work that we're going to do in the afternoon. I think the only other thing is I wanted to share with you were some tips about people who are new to group process. Um, I remember when I first was, uh, I first experienced group process, it was, um, I used to get out of the room, leave the room with just intense body feelings. The thing that was the most difficult for me and still is, I think, is to really believe that what I am experiencing is a part of this larger field and to believe in it and bring it in. Believe that what I am experiencing is important for everyone. It might be difficult to speak in a large group and you might want to find someone to support you or if you feel you're going into a trance maybe getting up and moving would help you or turn to someone next to you and speak about what you're experiencing yeah I think that's it I think that's what I had to say during this week-long world work training seminar in Washington DC a number of issues were addressed in each of the hour-long programs that follow in this series, we're able to follow the process as it unfolded. In the Asian process, we see the complexity of feelings that Asian and Asian Americans have about their history. Sexism and homophobia is an unusually frank and emotional exchange about sex and gender roles and how they're learned. Who here is disabled? What does it mean to be disabled or differently abled? In globalization, who benefits? People from India and other so-called third world countries confront privilege in the world. What can a white person do about racism documents how this question is addressed in each of the sessions. And in the program, The War in the Balkans, we're reminded of the pain we carry from the violence of the past. For more information about these programs, and how to take part in online discussion groups led by World Work facilitators, join us at www.iworldwork.com.